Greetings, I'm Terry Rhodes, Vice President for Quality Curriculum and Assessment at the Association of American Colleges and Universities. We welcome you to the sixth in our series of Next Generation Assessment WebBite interviews with leaders of each of the seven regional accrediting bodies in the United States. We asked each leader what they've been hearing from their member campuses during the pandemic related to two critical issues, the campus climate for assessment on those campuses and what expectations the accreditors have for useful evidence of student learning going forward. Here, we speak with Jamie and Studley from the Western Association for Senior Colleges and Universities Commission. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Tammy Cumming. I'm the Assistant Vice President and Associate Provost for Institutional Effectiveness at Brooklyn College of the City University of New York. I'm serving as co-host today when we talk about next generation assessment, uh, the viewpoint from the accreditation organization. Thanks. I'm Dave Miller from the University of Florida where I'm a faculty member in research and evaluation methods, and I'm also the director of the School of Human Development and Organizational Studies and Education. And we're extremely pleased to have with us today, Jamie Ann Studley, who is with WASC Senior College and University Commission. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm Jamie Ann Studley, president of the WASC Senior University, Senior College and University Commission. Thanks so much, Jamie. Happy to have you here. As you know, we're talking to different accreditation organizations throughout the United States and the response of institutions um, with the abrupt transition to remote learning due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And we wanted to focus today a little bit about what the accreditation and institutional response has been with respect to requirements, self-studies, and particularly with assessment, and then talk a little bit about what you see um, moving forward in this uh, next generation of assessment, so to speak. Um, to focus on the first thing, what has been the pulse out there of the institutional response, and what have you done to accommodate um, institutions with the onset of the pandemic? Um, the first thing that we have noticed that is the most consistent across institutions is a complete and total focus on students. Uh, the uh, intensity with which uh, institutions rallied to think about both delivery of academic program, student services, and the quality of students' lives. People realized quite quickly how uh, incredibly important it is to um, understand what's going on inside the classroom, now the remote classroom in most cases, and in students' lives and in the bridging activities of co-curricular uh, and advising and health services and mental health services uh, to understand the whole picture of what students need. Uh, that uh, is a plus for assessment because it means that people are uh, realizing how many different factors uh, affect uh, effective uh, student learning. And um, while unfortunately much research and committee and policy work has uh, had to move to the side, um, there is a positive in everybody rallying together about it for students. Uh, we've seen a, an incredible range in uh, the institutional uh, responses and individual responses of people who deal with assessment and accreditation. Many creative ideas to capture the lessons and experiences of the spring, uh, many campuses reporting pulling together and people who hadn't worked together before uh, rallying to do so, and the inclusion of institutional research and assessment professionals in meetings they hadn't been in necessarily um, as the institution tried to answer urgent questions. But there are also institutions that have uh, tried to put off assessment and see it as not an urgent priority we are hoping to help people see that it is a partner in understanding how to improve um, and go forward and how assessment can be done in practical kinds of ways. 
it's good to hear the emphasis on students that you have there. And, and I think that's always important because of course the students are the primary reason that we have universities and colleges. So I, it's good to hear that kind of emphasis. Uh, as you move forward though, I guess one of the things I hear about uh, more collaboration and those kinds of things. And I guess I'm sort of wondering, do you think that we're gonna see a change in the roles of assessment uh, uh, as we move along with this new environment? Or do you think that we're gonna have a very similar uh, go back to what is a very similar role to what we had in the past for assessment um, as with the new environment that we're in. Uh, I'd like to think that this is an opportunity for uh, creativity and uh, integration. Uh, the point of assessment is not to check a box. It is not to get through something that somebody else wants. The point of assessment, just like the point of uh, the one of the major purposes of accreditation is to move forward with the institution's own project to uh, pursue its mission and to understand how it can do it better, where the strengths and opportunities for improvement are, where an institution might stand relative to others and what it can learn from others and what it can offer into higher education that it does especially well. So, uh, as we talk about silver linings in this environment, one of them is there are real questions to be answered and there are real variations. In a session I did on the state of the community and another one we did on data use during the pandemic, we pointed out that often in doing course assessment, there are tiny variations from one section or one year or semester to another. And you're trying to figure out what they may um, relate to. Now we're going to see big swings and we're going to be figuring out uh, difficult issues. How much of that was external to the classroom? How much was it related to the professor's experience with this model? How much of it was uh, related to health or economic circumstances for the student? And how much, uh, if those things were in place, was the course as effective as it had been for students? And um, looking at those in a more uh, refined and subtle kind of way. Not with complicated tools, but maybe with very practical tools, the best that we uh, can marshal. So I think that assessment, um, we can look at how assessment can be as simple as needed to answer the questions that we really have. Uh, one good thing about accreditation and assessment is that everybody who asks those questions, who visits a school remotely or uh, in person, mm -hmm. is going to understand that this time is different and that there'll be asterisks on lots and lots of uh, uh, questions and on the data that people are able to assemble. But we'll be able, we hope, to get knowledge from them and think about what we want to watch, what we want to change, um, to do the things that assessment is designed for, to answer real and important questions, to identify strengths and areas for improvement, to plan and allocate resources, whether that's faculty time or financial resources of the institution. Uh, and we see our role as accreditors to make that not a box checking or compliance activity, but a very sensible, uh, effort uh, that decisions that people really have to make for the benefit of students and the design of curriculum and services going forward and to help provide the good examples, the training, the opportunities to come together and compare notes uh, that are so important in a professional community. We brought up a lot of excellent points and what's most, I think David and I are really interested in this, this genesis Genesis that we're going to see with the next generation of assessment. So mm -hmm. mentioned checking the box that's gone away. If we haven't demonstrated the utility of assessment um, at any time, it certainly has been right now. I think people mm -hmm. are using the data more than ever. And if they weren't believers in how that could be helpful for an institution moving forward, they certainly learned that it is. So mm -hmm. I, that's what we noticed um, at our institution. And we really think that this is going to be something phenomenal that we witness moving forward in next gen assessment regarding ownership of the data. Um, faculty reluctance, we believe, will go down. We think that mm -hmm. 
traders see the utility um, much stronger than they have in the past. David, what did you notice at UF? Well, I think UF is uh, making lots of changes uh, even just before this, because I think there's been a greater emphasis on uh, accreditation. And I think faculty are beginning to see the value of that. One of the things that I liked about what you said, though, is it sounds to me like uh, not only are we going to be looking at these issues, but perhaps more deeply, and perhaps it's a fresh start in a way to really get us to work together and think about these issues because we're going to be forced to be doing it in a new environment that's going to require us to at least rethink the things that we've talked about in the past. So, so I think that's going to be a very healthy thing for us. Mm -hmm. We're very much hoping you picked up some of the themes we think are important too. Making it practical, answering questions people really have uh, that matter. Uh, alliances. Uh, we did a survey uh, right around the beginning of May and many of the people who are responsible for uh, assessment or accreditation uh, said they saw new partnerships. They saw the opportunity for people to be in the room where decisions were being made who hadn't been included before and uh, the chance to show what they knew and how it could complement uh, what others were bringing to that conversation. So those are good things that um, would be uh, uh, opportunities growing out of uh, the crisis that we're in. Um, we are thinking about how to help institutions understand what a minimally viable um, assessment can be uh, and how to build on the questions that faculty have about course design and uh, evaluation. And maybe it's time to look at the student learning outcomes. A present college president I was talking to yesterday said, this is a good time to be asking how important is coverage relative to the student's intellectual adaptability and ability to analyze. And that's a really good fundamental question that somebody can help answer um, as we watch the curricular changes that faculty make um, about what they're feeling good about, what questions they'd never thought to ask but are now excited about, and, um, and a particular interest, are we reaching all of the students? How do we understand the variation and the circumstances uh, of uh, our students? I think one of the big surprises this spring was for all that we have understood that equity is critically important, I think the depth and uh, span of um, issues and consequences of the lack of equity in the student circumstances financial, academic, uh, health. Um, we saw it with our international students and students who uh, didn't have a place to study if they went home. Um, and all of that has underlined uh, the importance of thinking about equity in academic design, in assessment design, and in the planning going forward to make sure that all of our students have those uh, opportunities and that we know what makes a difference to their success. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Thank well, you for coming and meeting with us. This has been very helpful and, and uh, we think you've made a lot of good points that uh, faculty would be glad to hear. Yeah, absolutely, and admins too. Thank you again, Jamie. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate uh, doing this under the umbrella of AACNU and thank you, it, it's nice to um, be allies uh, in this work going forward. Thank you, thank you very much.